Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. The thing with uh, the Beach Boys, Rob, is every time you hear a Beach Boys song, you think, oh, remember back in the 60s when you used to go down to Barwon Heads and you know, get a you know, Chico Roll and stuff? You cannot listen to the Shantuzis without thinking good times, you know, just having fun. It was just one of those kind of fun bands, weren't they? They were, they aren't were indeed, they? aren't they? And indeed. Uh, it's uh, it's happening. It's coming back to town, our town. Well, almost our town. Well, Bannock Boom's our, our town. town. Yeah. yeah. That, of course, was the Shantuzis and um, which queen? We have got the queen, well, one of the queen parts of the Shantuzis. Evie Von Bierbro, welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show. Thank you very much. What an introduction. Happy with that? I'm very happy with that. No, no, no issues at all. Uh, only problem is, of course, we do an intro like that. We then say, "Well, Evie, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for joining us." <laughs> no, hey, not uh, true. We're here for a while. Evie, they said it wouldn't last, but here you are, still going. It's an amazing little story. Uh, do you pinch yourself still a bit? Well, not so much a pinch, but just kind of a, a, a very large smile to go and and full of gratitude to um, to still be doing what we get, you know, we love to do. Um, is, is, you know, like a lot of people have to retire around our age if they're in an office job or something like that, we get to go. And as we often say, it's the only job where you have to have alcohol to go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> it helps a little bit. Yeah, we, we, we draw the line here at 9am on a Saturday morning, but uh, often Rob comes in having not finished off from, uh, from, Saturday, uh, from Friday night. Uh, just on that serious side, it's a it's a fun industry necessarily, and we've we've interviewed a lot of uh, uh, Australian artists who have been in the industry for a long, long time, and and the, the the passion and support and respect they have for each other, and I guess you fit in. But to do what you do on stage is an element of looking after yourself uh, as well, and keeping professionalism and and a level of fitness. Um, do, do you do you have to work hard at that, or is it just all fun? Uh, well. No, we do, I don't know if we work hard at it, but it is a part of our everyday life, you know, exercise and um, we've always been healthy eaters and um, exercise fanatics, maybe less so nowadays, but back in the day, total gym junkies and um, yeah, no, I think as you, you kind of know yourself more and so you sort of make better choices, let's well, say. Well, we're here to talk about your in, uh, impending visit to this town or nearby and and to play one of your new songs. But we, let's wind the clock right back. Uh, I think a lot of people know the story of how the Shantuzis were formed. Tell us a bit about how that happened and why it happened. Uh, well, it, it was all very, um, what did I say? By, it wasn't accident, but it, um, we, we were all friends, but independently. So, so most of us knew Tosh and Toddy Goldsmith and um, uh, Ali was down from Sydney um, recording or she making Neighbours at the time um, and there was a there was actually a fifth Shantuzi da, da, da. <laughs> um, it was Rob Cameron yes <laughs> no one knew <laughs> yeah you look great in the dress <laughs> no he doesn't trust me <laughs> but you actually know yeah um so, no, uh, Robin Nissen was her name, and she uh, was with us for the first six weeks. And then, But she was a very fabulous businesswoman, and, um, and so she went back to her, her business. But she had a fabulous voice, and um, she was sort of the conduit that introduced everyone together, really. So, um, uh, yeah, so we all met up, and we were having sort of uh, afternoon teas and things at Top's house, and... Her brother walked past Brett, who was the bass player in our band, and he said, oh, well, why don't you girls get serious and I'll get some boys together. And so we, we were sort of mucking around singing, you know, songs from the 60s and 70s, and then he got the band together, and we kind of went, well, let's just have a, something to work towards. So it was Tot's birthday, and her father owned the underground nightclub, and so he said, well, if you girls and boys get serious, I'll put you on at the underground. And uh, so we did, and we did it for Top's birthday, and it was a huge success, and we played there for six weeks on a Friday night, um, and then one of those nights, uh, uh, an English producer called David Courtney 
was in the audience and he had worked a lot with Leo Sayer and had written Long Tall Glasses and all, all, all those sort of songs for, for Leo and produced a lot of his songs. And he had the song Witch Queen with him and he said, I'm looking for a band. And Mushroom sent him down. They said, oh, we've heard about these guys, the Shantuzis, they might be good. And so he went to see us and he thought, perfect. And so uh, we recorded that song and then Mushroom got involved and um, and we had a film clip made by um, uh, the guy who had just finished directing Crocodile Dundee and he did the Witch Queen film clip, which was just, oh my God, we all looked like drag queens. We all had... <laughs> of lipstick and hair and shoulders pads and... Again, very much like Rob Cameron this morning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got a visual now, haven't you? Rob, I really... You know, dresses and hair and... Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so that, that's sort of how we started. And then, you know, it snowballed from there in terms of clubs and places wanting to book us and Mushroom got involved and, um, you know, and then we did Step On You and then we started writing our own songs and... Um, and the rest is sort of, as they say, history. The, the name, how did that, was that just sitting around with a bottle of wine and uh, throwing ideas around? Not well, again, back to the Goldsmiths, uh, Brian Goldsmith, who owned the Underground, um, he had uh, come up with the name. He said, oh, why don't you, you're female singers, and you know, but let's make it classy and French and chanteuse. And then we all thought, mm, yeah, but people aren't going to say, oh, I'm going down to see the chanteuse. Or the shantu, or what? So we we Australianised. Yeah, well done, yeah. love it. And made it shantu. There you go. And, and and before long, a lot, you know, the the twosies, and you know, it became very much like a nickname, didn't it? Almost. Well, that's right, and and that's pretty much what we are now, the twosies. It's just Ali and I. Yeah, the TWOsies, <laughs> as distinct from the TWOsies. <laughs> Uh, the the construction from the outside looking in, we think life's pretty easy. All these people doing all the work, creating the sounds, and then you just turn up. They put a microphone in front of you, hit the switch, you do your stuff, pack up and go home. Oh, I have to have a couple of bottles of wine. But um, the work you're doing, you, you mentioned doing your own writing. When did when did it get to the point where you went, hang on a minute, this is this is pretty serious. Let's really get our teeth into this project. I think that was after we did. Um He's going to step on you again, and that was, of course, um, that was the song after Witch Queen. But of course, we did that uh, the same time as the Party Boys doing it, and of course, their version was slightly more popular than ours, but um, only slightly. And then we thought, hang on a minute, we have to start writing our own material. We can't keep doing covers and things like that. We've done a few covers through um, the span of our lifetime, and that sense but um uh yeah mostly we've written our own stuff so um and it's great being able to do that we we sort of uh brett and i were the songwriters so we wrote want to be up and kiss and tell and and a lot of the other album tracks on on there we collaborated with james rain um and uh yeah we had lots of people you know, sort of with import and stuff, lots of great musicians. I mean, Melbourne is just the hot pot of brilliant talent in Australia, I think. It's some really great talent in, in Melbourne. Stevie, I'm intrigued with that yeah. taking up songwriting at a mature age. Most of the, the great ones are in at their teens, they're tinking around pianos and guitars, 10 or 11 putting things together. So to come from outside of an interest in music and all of a sudden starting to write, I guess you're in your 20s. Um, yes. H- how easy or difficult was it to do? So it was just, it flowed. I, I was a trained singer. I used to sing opera um, with the Victorian State Opera. And um, unfortunately, I had bad circulation. And so that ended because you have to kneel a lot on the ground in opera. And um, I was doing Gilbert and Sullivan at the State Theatre in Melbourne and kneeling for 20 minutes, I couldn't feel my legs, so I couldn't leave the stage and everyone's looking at me like, what, what are you doing? At that point, of course, you said, I want to be up, don't want to be down. <laughs> <laughs> you can use that any time you want, by the way, as long as I get appropriate credits. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, that's where it all started, of course. Yeah. Um, Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, so, yes, no, that's um, it, it was a, a natural flow and Brett was my 
you know, co-writer, and we uh, we were a good team. You know, it, it worked well with us. I think that's the thing. I I, I can come up with an idea, melody, and um, on keyboard and guitar and stuff. And uh, but it's always great to work. I'm a team player, so it's always I really enjoy working with someone else to flesh it out and bring other things to it. So I think that's when you get the really good. The good stuff. So, how much how much of you is music as opposed to lyrics, or is it definitely a collaborative thing right across both facets? Uh, well, I think um, it's fifty fifty. I think I would say, um, yeah, a collaborative thing. Uh, definitely, I write I write mostly melody, so um, but I do write music as well. So yeah, it's a it's an even split. So if you go back to some of those really early um, film clips, there's about 15 of you, so it seems, you know, by the time you had the band and all the girls and at the front singing and so forth. Uh, yes. It wasn't really that many. It was probably, what, seven or eight at times. In terms of the team playing thing, um, obviously the collaboration of the music, but just choosing songs. For example, you know, he's going to step on you again. How, how do you make that decision when you've got seven or eight people having input to it? Well, uh, I guess really Brett was um, a driving force um, in the music room as such and luckily there were four verses so there are four singers so everyone just got a verse uh-huh. um, in that respect um, and the guys I mean again it just you know as a, when you're in the band you, you, you come into a studio and, and everyone sort of sits around and puts in their, their 50 cents worth and um, and then the producer will sort of be the maestro and sort of go allocate, oh, yeah, this works and that works and don't do it there but do it here and what have you. So, um, I mean, we that I think was the charm of the Chantuzies is that we all we all got on really well. We all love each other. I mean, still to this day, we all, you know, stay in touch. And um, I think, you know, we just worked well together. We And, and there was an, a great element of fun. Mm, that, and that came through. Now, Rob, you, you're always a big one for music trivia. I think I'm right in saying that in 1987, when that aforementioned He's Going to Step on You Again song came out, I think 36 years ago, that was the last time two exact same songs were in the top 40 in Australia by two different artists. Oh, uh, look, possibly. I would say that. I can't remember what number we got to. I know. I think it was twenty-five. Yeah, you. Were, I think sort of mid twenties, and they got into sort of more like the fifteens. I think, but I think in in terms of like you know, it used to be quite common back in the early sixties and late sixties, and you know, another really obvious one is um, raindrops keep falling on my head. John Farnham had a version of it at the same time as B.J. Thomas had a version, but I think that was the last time. Yeah. Well, yeah, Australian artists because it happened to us again. Oh, okay. Oh my God! So then we did. Um, we did a cover of uh, Michael Jackson's song, <laughs> um, I'll Be There. Oh, yeah. And it was a dance mix, um, and it was really fun. At the same time that we released it, who in America released it? Mariah Carey. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> there you go, head to head there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Her marketing machine might have been a bit bigger than yours. <laughs> and let her go right through. Yeah, nice. We just kind of went, uh, and even dogs could hear that. <laughs> <laughs> we just, um, yeah, we let that one go. Now, before we return to the uh, latest incarnation of the uh, Chantuzies, as you said, Ali and yourself are coming to Bannockburn, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, we need to step, just have you step out of the Chantuzies for a moment, because there's a couple of parts to your life that some people may not even realise. For starters, you were in one of the most glamorous movies ever made in Australia, uh, a man about uh, a film about a bloke who used to put portable dunnies around Dun- the place. <laughs> um, I think you're an ear hostess, am I right? I, I am. I'm Jackie Shepherd, the, uh, the love interest of Kenny. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of Rob's favourite TV shows, because he's a good mate of Brian's, uh, is a thing called Rock Quiz. You've had a bit to do with that, I understand. Oh, yeah. Well, so I was the... Um, my title was the Rockstar Wrangler. Um, because I've worked in a lot of film and television and I've also worked in music, I was the conduit for the musicians into the show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so everyone understood what was going on. and Because... While it's all creative industries, they're quite different in terms of um, the way they flow and such. So um, 
so yeah, that was a great. I loved working on that show. I love that show. I love those people. It is, um, it is just you know, it's a fantastic, fantastic format. And Julia, <clears throat> excuse me, Julia and Brian are brilliant. They're an incredible team, and I mean the entire team, the producers, everyone. It's a great, um, great format, and I just hope they keep going. Yeah, it's, it is really good. Uh, Fantastic. We've se- seen a lot on television, and, and uh, Brian is a regular guest on another format that we do here at the station. Uh, and we went to see them in Geelong, and they they do have this sort of uh, magic that works together. But but what it does, it gives the likes of yourself and another friend of the show, Mike Rudd, who um, has featured on there a few times, a chance for we lovers of Australian rock to see these iconic names come back and perform. Uh, it, it's just a fantastic format. Yeah, it is. It's a great, and it's really. Um, I think it's really important to to hold on to that. To sort of look at the. I remember having a chat with. Um, I did a backstage film on uh, when we did the countdown um, tour in 2014. I think it was or six. Anyway, a few years ago, and Daryl Braithwaite was talking about people forgetting the longevity, like how long people contribute to an industry and um, and it's just as powerful. Like Daryl, as an artist, is, you know, more prolific and touring and things now. And Russell Morris, who's been on your show, I know, and mm. all sorts of different people. They've, they've been in the industry for a really long time and I think it's really important to acknowledge that and to, to, um, to sort of praise it or kind of, you know, um, reward it. It's an incredible... Um, history, you know, and we're not really in a society. I don't think we're very good at um, sort of holding on to the history of things, or we're sort of like, yeah, but what's new? What's coming up? What's next? Mm, yeah. You sort of think, yeah, but that's only been able to happen because this has been, you know, and um, and I'd say the same for the artists and stuff. I mean, Russell Morris, we played uh, a gig with him not so long ago, and he is phenomenal. <laughs> so fabulous. He's and he's just got the best sense of humour and he's just terrific. He's wonderful. And the musicians that play with him are incredible. Um, Pete Robinson. Uh, oh, really, you know, it's, um, it's wonderful. People have got to go out and see music. It's so important in shaping the community and society and how we are with each other. And it's a whole different language. And I think I'm right in saying that Russell was, um, his first single that he released was with somebody's image. And I reckon that was 1966, 67. Yeah. So if you know someone who is 57 years of age, he was performing and recording and releasing singles before they were born. Like, if, if you start thinking about it like that, you know, it just is mind boggling. Yeah, that's right. Well, um, yeah, there's a lot to be... Uh you know, to be said for the artists who have all that experience and what they bring to a show, especially live music. Mm. So, um, and, you know, you get that also, snippets of that in rock with, you know, when the artists do a little story or they have their song and it just, it kind of really takes you somewhere. It transports you to um, somewhere else, which I think is, you know, incredible thing to do, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Eva, I'm going to be very careful as I tiptoe into this area, but uh, we're talking about female artists v male artist uh, Russell Morris. In his 70s now, still going around and doing good stuff, and people are there to listen to the music. Uh, the Shantuzis have been about um, the the glitz, the glamour, the appearance, the, the, the sexiness almost of the circumstance. At the stage of your life, are you thinking about how much longer can we do this? Or are you confident that that you're always going to be accepted? There's always an audience that people that come along and love you for, for the music and not so much the image. I think there's always an audience. Um, and I think it's about how you deliver the show, how you know how you go about doing that. I'd just like to say that if the Shantuzis were... Uh, Gilligan's Island, I would be Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob would be Gilligan. <laughs> I, I could do Gilligan for you without any trouble. No, that's, um, that's an interesting view. So, yeah, but I think it's about what you feel inside, you know. Mm. I, and it's about, uh, it's like I was saying before, about how you know yourself. If you, if you really kind of, there's a, I think there's a fire in being an artist. There's a fire inside that 
you know, that, if that's always fueled, it doesn't matter what you look like or what you, you know, it's about what you deliver, what you bring to it and how you do that, I think. So focusing on your upcoming appearance and the song that we are about to play in a couple of minutes, which is called Every Night, I would have thought, um, you know, as I said at the start, whenever I, even when you say the word shantuzis, it puts a smile on your face because you know it's going to be, you know, party time, everyone's up having a great time. And when you mentioned about the fact it was, you know, Toddy's 25th birthday or something, and I go back and I do the maths, there's no way in the world you guys are that old. So that that's fine because you are will always be 35 in my <laughs> mind because it's sort of into your career a bit by that stage. I- I started Shantuzis, it was my first job. I was 21, I think, or 22. Yeah, let's not do the maths then on how old you are now, because that'll make us feel really depressed and old. But uh, when you sit down to write a song now, is it in the back of your mind that it's got to sound like a, quote, Shantuzi song? Or is it something that you just go, I'm just going to write something and we can shantuzi it, or, or not, as the case may be? Um, well, that's a really interesting question, because I had exactly that thought. I was going... I, because I, I write for myself as well, and, um, and and that's very different music to Shantuzi. So I thought, no, it has to be fun, and as you said, all those things. Um, but that's where the collaboration factor comes in. So we worked with Tim Henwood, who is a Geelong legend. You know, he plays with Road Traders. He's Susie Quattro's preferred guitarist when she comes to town. He, uh, you know, he, he plays with everyone, John Stevens. He's a very, very talented soul, and we loved him. Uh, and he, uh, I had this guitar riff, um, which you'll hear in this song, but it wasn't, he said, no, it's not going to be guitar, it's going to be vocal. And I went, oh, uh, that's quite different from Shantuzi, so I just think that should be it. And he goes, no, 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 we'll do it like this. So he brought a whole new thing to it. And Ali and I were thinking about, we just thought, well, let's just try something new for Shantuzi. It's not, I mean, it's, we wouldn't normally think, oh, let's do a vocal riff. And um, But, you know, he took us there and we thought, well, let's just do it and see what happens. And we had fun with it. So I think, again, it's about how you how you come into something, how what you bring to it to, that, you know, makes it or not. And um, so we just went, let's just give it our all and have some fun. And that's what we did. So, um, but, yeah, it is a thing because you sort of, you can't, you don't necessarily want to be what you were when we started 37 whatever years ago. You know, we want to try and move slightly with the time. Mm. So, um, and I think that's important as an artist. You've got to keep sort of moving forward and trying something different. And so, um, But at the same time, using the analogy I used at the start, if the Beach Boys were able to reform and started playing Black Sabbath type music, people would go, what on earth's going on here? I came to see the Beach Boys. So I guess there's got to be that balance, particularly in your live shows. I'm assuming in your live shows, people uh, will know that you want to be up and that uh, you might kiss and tell amongst other things but I'm sort some new stuff as well oh yeah no we totally we do we do a lot of our songs we do um, some our favorite covers um, and mostly Australian we do a couple of and and may she rest in peace Tina Turner songs which we can't wait to do next weekend it's going to be um, you know I'll be singing in them but very differently than how I used to sing them because, you know, now she's departed and, um, uh, yeah, it has a whole new meaning to uh, those songs. So, um, yeah, we have a lot of fun, though. So if people want to come along and see the two Toosies, uh, that is to say Ali and Evie as the Shantoosies, you'll be playing at the Bannockburn Railway Hotel, which is about 20 minutes out of Geelong, so people can go out there, have a meal, have one or two drinks over the space of three hours so that they don't do anything silly on the way home, and uh, you will be guaranteed a good time, I would have thought, June 3rd, I'm assuming check your local guides for tickets? Correct, all of that. I always wanted to say check your local guides, it sounds like you know what you're talking about, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which clearly we've demonstrated we don't, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Eve, it's been uh, a pleasure chatting with you. It'll be great to have you in town, and uh, I think the vibrance that's in your voice and clearly the way you still perform. We're going to be uh, talking about the Shantuzis for a long, long time yet. We will. 
You know it. Yeah, we, we know it. <laughs> Great to have made your acquaintance telephonically. Um, not sure that we can get to the Bano next Saturday night. I've got a few other things going on, but if we can, we'll certainly come and say good day. But guaranteed, this song that we're going to hear, it's called Every Night. It's available on all good streaming platforms. I've actually bought the song through Apple Music, so you can do that as well, folks. Get out and support local music because it is really, really important that we do. Evie Von Bibra, thanks for being on the Two Blokes Chatting Show. Radio show, in fact. Having me. It's been great to have you. See you, mate. Bye.